Hi, this is Kevin from the Mathsaurus. In this video, we're going to look at questions 11 to 15 from the Junior Maths Challenge of 2021. But I actually don't think you should watch this video because I've put this entire paper, as well as the 2020 paper, into a totally free online course. You can sign up for that course by clicking on the link below. For each question there, I'll also give you a video hint uh, before you get to see the full solution. That means you can have a go at the question. If you get stuck, you can have a look at the hint. You can really give yourself the best chance of getting the question right before going on to watch the solution. I really think it's the best way to prepare for the Junior Maths Challenge or for other challenges at this age, and it's just great extension and enrichment material for any students of the same age too. So do click the link below and head over there and have a look at that course. No ads or distractions either, like you get here on YouTube. Uh, but if you do want to keep watching on YouTube, of course, you're very welcome. I'll put all of these videos into a playlist so you can see them all together as well. And I will get on with the solutions for this video. So in the hint, I talked a bit about what a prism is, right? It's like a, I've got to take a shape uh, on one end here and extend it in three dimensions. And um, and we get a shape something like this. So look, look at the hint if you're not sure what a prism is. Um, so like in this one, I've got my two ends that are faces, and then I get another four faces, like the top, the, the two sides, and the bottom here. So this would give me six faces. Now, if I want 10 faces, I'm stuck with the two ends, and I've just got to make sure then that whatever is in the middle accounts for the extra eight faces. So if I want eight more, I'm going to have to start with an eight-sided shape uh, on the end of my prism. So it's going to have to be an octagon uh, on the end here. And then if I extend uh, that as a prism to another octagon on the other, other side. I'm not sure how well I'm going to draw this. Let's give it, give it my best shot here. Um, OK, then I will have 10 faces, right? I'll have a face on this on the back here, a face on the front, and I'll have the eight that go uh, around here. Um, so that is uh, 10 faces. So how many edges does it have? Well, the octagon has uh, eight sides, and they become edges of this three-dimensional shape. So there's going to be eight edges on this octagon. There's also going to be eight on the one on the back. And then there are eight edges that go from each of the connecting sides as well, from each of the eight vertices uh, on this side to this side. So there's another eight there. So the answer to this question is that the uh, number of edges is going to be eight plus eight plus eight, which is 24. And so the answer is C. OK, I'm going to do this question in two ways. Um, the most obvious way to do it, I think, is to turn these uh, bits of information into uh, minutes, right? So Jasleen, um, who answers uh, four questions every 30 seconds, we could also say answers uh, eight questions uh, every minute, right? So if Jasleen takes exactly one hour to do this, that's 60 minutes times eight questions. Six times eight is 48, times 10 is 480. So there must be 480 questions uh, in this paper. Now, what about uh, Ella then? Well, Ella does five questions every 40 seconds. And so if I multiply that up by three, that's 15 questions uh, every two minutes. And that's probably the easiest way to do this, keep the number of minutes a nice whole number. So how many lots of 15 questions are there? Well, I'll do 480 divided by 15. 48 divided by 15 is 3, with 3 left over, 30 divided by 15 is 2, so that's 32. So Ella needs 32 lots of 2 minutes uh, to do these questions. 32 times 2 is 64 minutes, and 64 minutes is 4 more minutes than an hour, and so the answer here is D. Um, a fast way of doing this, if you want a really uh, nice uh, mathematical method, is actually to look at how long they um, each take uh, well, how many questions they each do in two minutes. So you see, you could also say that Jasleen takes uh, 16, the 16 questions uh, in two minutes, right? Whereas uh, Ella does only 15 questions in two minutes. So Jasleen's sort of speed, uh, if you like, is 16 fifteenths of the speed of Ella, right? So um, so Ella's speed is 15 sixteenths of the speed of of Jasleen. So you could here, if you really think about this carefully, just say we just need to do 16 times uh, 16 fifteenths to work out the time uh, that Ella takes. 16, 60 over 15 is 4, so that's 4 times 16, which is 64. That method requires a bit more of a deeper understanding of sort of um, speed and time and things, um, but it's a very efficient method if you can spot it. I think most people would do it the first way 
And that would be a great answer for the Junior Maths Challenge. So I hope we didn't give too much away in the hint here. Um, we've got five line segments uh, coinciding at this point as shown. I want to know what the sum of the angles is. Um, you know, if we just wanted to know, if we included all of these angles as well, these red ones, um, then together with the red ones, we would just have uh, five triangles. We'd have all the interior angles of the triangle. So it would be five times 180 is uh, 900. Now, sorry, to start with, we know that 900 is not the answer, it's less than that. Uh, and so if you were going to guess here, you might start guessing one of the ones that are close to 900. But we can work this out exactly, of course, as well. I also mentioned maybe think about opposite angles, right? So if you look at this red one here, then opposite it, um, I'm going to put this green angle. But they are equal. Right? Opposite angles are equal because we've got these two lines meeting at a point here. Um, similarly, opposite this red angle here, there's, a, there's one here. And opposite each of the red angles, there's a green angle, and they're all equal. So the total of all the red angles and all the green angles, right, gives us a full circle, right? So all those green angles plus all of those red angles is equal to a circle. And we know that a circle is 360 degrees all the way around at the center here if I had all of those angles. So if they're equal, uh, they must both be 180, 360 divided by 2. So the sum of the red angles is exactly 180. So to get the answer here, we need 900 minus 180, and that is 720 degrees. And so the answer is B. The only numbers we're going to consider here are multiples of 9, because when we divide them by 9, we need to get uh, uh, an integer. And if it's not a multiple of 9, I won't, I won't end up with an integer here, obviously. Um, and we're only going to consider quite large numbers, right? If I do 900 divided by 9, I get 100. So if I start with anything lower than 900, um, I am not, I'm going to get a two digit number here. And when I subtract nine, it's going to be even smaller. So it'll still be two digits, right? And in fact, that's the problem here. Even if I start with 900 here, by the time I subtract nine, I'm down to 91. So I actually need this final, this number here, once I've divided it by, by nine, to be at least 109, right? If it was only 108, when I subtract nine, I'll be down to a two digit answer again. So it's got to be that when I divide it by 9, I get at least 109. So my starting point has got to be 109 times 9. Okay, and that gives you uh, 981 here. So 981 is the smallest number that works here. Uh, and we're only considering multiples of 9. So the next one that would work would be 990, which is 9 more. And then 999 would also work um, if you divide uh, you know, this one by 9, you get 109, this one you get 110, this one 111. And when you subtract 9, you get 100, 101, and 102. And they are the only numbers that can work. So the answer here is A3. Right, so we start with this big pile of 2p coins. And we know we get rid of half of them, so there must be an even number of, of 2p coins. right? And what we do is we get rid of all of the 2p coins in one pile, and we replace them with 10p coins, right? So it's natural to think, ah, oh, right, I've got a 2p and a 10p together, I've got another 2p and a 10p, another 2p and a 10p, and I've got another 2p and a 10p. And I really just want to know how many groups there are here. Right, well, each group is 12p, and she's got £4.20, which is 420p. So if I can do 420 divided by 12, 12 times 3 is, uh, is 36, 6 left over, 12 times 5 is 60, there must be 35 groups of 12p here, right? 12 times 35 is 420. So initially, she didn't have 35 groups of 12p. She must she had 35 uh, groups of a 2p and a 2p. So 35 groups of 4p, and then 35 times 4 is 140. Um, work that out however you want. 2 times 2 times 2 to get 7 to get 35 times 2 is 70. Times 2 is 140, or have you want to work it out? 140p is £1.40, and so the answer here is D. I hope that was useful. Don't forget to sign up for my totally free online course link in the description below. Uh, you can over there have a go at the whole of the 2020 paper, the whole of the 2021 paper, all of them with a video hint and solution to give yourself the best chance of getting the questions uh, right for yourself. It's a great way to prepare for the Junior Maths Challenge or any other maths challenge for students ages 10 to 13. And it's a totally free course, so no reason not to click below and go over there and sign up now.